welcome you to our podcast, The Dwayne Dunaway Show. We're always very honored that you take the time to be with us. And we're excited about the following fact. God is with us. Have you ever thought about what it would be like if God was against us? You know, the Bible teaches that before Christ saves us, we are the enemies of God. You remember that in Romans chapter 5? If while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son. Sin makes one an enemy of God. That's, there's just no other way to put it. And being an enemy of God means being an enemy of the one who gave you life, created the universe, and has all the power there is at his disposal. Now, when you become a Christian, you move from being his enemy to being his friend. So much so, you are in an actual saved relationship of love and dependence upon him, one where he is there listening to your prayers. He is concerned about everything that is happening in your life, and you can call him your father. In fact, Jesus even used a word that had not been applied to him before in the way that Jesus used it when he, when he called him Abba, Father. You know, you've read that in the Bible where Jesus uh, cried out, Abba, Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. And then Paul picked that up in Romans 8 and Galatians 4 and said, we can all call him Abba, Father. What does that mean, Abba, Father? That's the most intimate term for father there was in the Greek language and in the Hebrew language and in whatever language is translated into. In our language, it would be something like daddy or papa. It would be one of the first words that a young child would use in reference to, to their father. And Orthodox Jews did not think in terms of calling God their daddy or their papa. How can we go from that strict legal system of separation in the Old Testament where, you know, Moses, take your shoes off, you're standing on holy ground, or there's a veil, stay out of the holy place, in the most holy place. Only the high priest can go in there once a year. He can only go once a year, and he better not mess up while he's in there. That emphasis on separation from God. How do we go from that to being able to call God Daddy? Jesus Christ. That's how we go from way over here to where we are now. And we need to appreciate that because when Jesus comes into the world, we move from being God's enemies to having God with us. Matthew chapter 1, verse 18, the birth of Jesus was as follows. Before his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child of the Holy Spirit. Joseph was a just man. He did not want to make her a public example. He didn't want to humiliate her, so he was minded to put her away privately. But while he thought about these things, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to you marry your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. She will bring forth a son. You will call his name Jesus. Why? Because that name means Savior. He will save his people from their sins. All this was done that it might be fulfilled what was spoken by Isaiah the prophet. His name shall be called Emmanuel, which means God with us. That's Matthew 1, 18 through about verse 23. Jesus comes into the world and he is called God with us. That's what can be said about him. Do you know what the, uh, the entrance of Jesus into the world shouts to us? God is with us. God is on our side. God is in our corner, here to save us, here to help us. God cares about us. Later on, Jesus would make a statement in Matthew chapter 10. He said, are not two sparrows sold for a single copper coin, and yet not one of them falls to the ground apart from your father's will? The hairs of your head are all numbered. Therefore, do not fear. You are worth more than a multitude of sparrows. What's Jesus trying to tell us there? He's trying to tell us that God knows us. And God cares about us. When we take the time away from our daily activities and all these busy things that we have to do, when we start taking the time to spend time with God and to think about the concern and the care and the compassion that he has, then it is life-changing. Not only does he care about you, you have his attention. You ever been talking to someone and, and then you could tell that they just weren't zoned in? Their mind was elsewhere, and you were just saying, you know, this person doesn't care anything about me. He doesn't care anything about anything I have to say. They wish they were somewhere else. They don't even want to talk to me. Getting someone's attention who doesn't care about you is, is practically impossible. Did you know that you have God's attention? God's concern means God's attention. That means he's paying attention to you. That means when you pray, he's listening. That means when you hurt, he hurts. That means he knows everything that's going on in your life. And why does he know everything 
that's going on in your life. Well, you say, well, he's God. He's, he's, he's omniscient. He knows everything. That's true. But he also knows what's going on in your life because he cares. Why does he care? Does he care because we're so great and wonderful? He doesn't need anything from us. He would be just as much God without us as he is right now. Why does he care? There's only one reason he cares, because he wants to care. He saves us because he wants to save us. He listens to our prayers because he wants to listen to our prayers. We need to understand the nature of God and what he's really like. Because when Jesus comes into the world, that's his love letter to us. The religion is Jesus. Okay, The covenant is Jesus. The message is Jesus. And here's the message. God loves you. God is with you. And so if God is with us, and if uh, Jesus' entrance into the world means that God is with us, what difference does it make who is against us? If the whole world turns against you and speaks negatively of you, what does that matter if God is for you? Do you understand who God is? Do you understand how big God is? Do you understand how important God is compared to God? The whole world means nothing. And here's what God says about you. I'm on your side. I am in your corner. The only people that will be rejected by God are those who stubbornly refuse to be accepted by him because he's in the accepting business. He's in the receiving business. He's not in the rejecting business. Religion so often misrepresents him because they're always looking to reject people. They're always looking for reasons to sort of kick people out. Anybody that does not line up exactly like they require, I mean, they'll cut you off in a minute because they don't really care about you. Now, there are exceptions to that, of course, but generally speaking, that's what religion is. That's the way religion is. But God is not like that. God is not looking for reasons to get rid of you or to cut off fellowship with you. You'll have to walk away from him. You'll have to abandon him because he's not going to abandon you. As long as you want him in your life, as long as you want his attention, you have got it. And there's nothing that says, I love you, like the presence of Jesus Christ into the world. So when you think about the birth of Jesus and you think about the life of Jesus and you think about the death of Jesus and you think about the resurrection of Jesus, Think about the message of Jesus, what all of that says. That message says you matter. That message says God is with us. In fact, that message says to you, and I'm talking to you as an individual, that message says that if you were the only person on earth who needed saving, if you don't think Jesus would have come down here and been born and lived and died and been raised from the dead for you, if you were the only one that needed it, then you simply don't understand Jesus. You don't understand his love. You don't understand what it means when he says, uh, the hairs of your head are all numbered. He knows everything about you. He cares about you, everything that's going on. So your worth, your purpose in life, all of those things that we seek, those voids that we have in our heart and in our lives, all of those things are filled when we learn to appreciate Jesus and begin to understand that he is the religion, which means the religion is a relationship. It's a relationship with him. A relationship with you matters more to God than all of the military kingdoms in the world, all the buildings in the world, all the things that man can, can build or put together, all the money in the world. Nothing in the world matters to God more than his relationship with you and with me. And we matter more than the animal kingdom. We matter more than all the stars in the galaxy. Those things are hard to grasp because we just don't value relationships as much as, as God does. But God is in the people business. God values people. And we need to remember that. And we need to let him value us. In other words, we need to allow his assessment of us, his concern for us, his love for us, the way he views us. We need to let that influence the way we view ourselves. We need to stop looking at ourselves as, as worthless or beneath other people. God says we have worth because he loves us. And then when you do that, when you begin to love yourself because God loves you, not with an inflated, you know, arrogant sense of ego or anything like that, but loving yourself because God loves you and God tells you to love yourself, then you're able to love your neighbor. Remember that commandment? Love your neighbor as yourself, not love your neighbor more than yourself, not love your neighbor instead of yourself, but love your neighbor as yourself. In order to do that, you have to have some kind of healthy self-love going on there. And the only kind of healthy self-love there is, is the kind that comes from realizing, as people say a lot, you know, God doesn't make mistakes. God created me. God loves me. God came into this world 
to say to me that he is with me. He is on my side. Jesus is God's love letter to you and to me. So think about those things today and let your thoughts about God be positive thoughts, affirming thoughts, because the love of God is very real. Now, if you're in rebellion against God and you don't care about him, then none of that applies to you. But if you are trying and uh, you're willing to just make an effort to love him back and to appreciate him, then everything we're talking about here applies to you. Being in a relationship with God is a very simple matter. He's made it simple because he wants it to happen. We appreciate your time and your attention. If you want to help the ministry, the link to do that is in my bio. We appreciate all the help we can get. But mainly, keep your focus on Jesus and remember that his interest into the world is his love letter to you. God is with us.